author and investigative journalist Naomi Klein believes China is ready to finally show off a potent hybrid of the most powerful political tools of authoritarianism and global capitalism. To discuss the significance of China's debut on the Olympic stage, the Real News Network senior news editor Paul Jay spoke to Naomi Klein in studio. Welcome back to our series of interviews with Naomi Klein. The Western media and politicians focus on, uh, well, recently, of course, the killing of the Chinese uh, policemen, uh, purportedly by Uyghur Muslims in, in eastern China. Mm -hmm. um, they focus on issues of democracy movements from students. But there isn't a heck of a lot of focus on the th tens of thousands of strikes every year, mm -hmm. the tens of thousands of protests in villages across rural China, and how many of these workers th that are working under labor discipline um, are working in Western-owned factories, in Western-owned plants, and that's not much part of the story that we hear on Western media. Yeah, well, I, I, I think there, that, that um, the, all, all of this technology, once again, is in the name of building a harmonious society. Uh, th this, this phrase comes up again and again. It is directed in, at, at rural protesters, it's directed at, 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 at wildcat strikes, um, and uh, I even have a, a report from, uh, from the South China Morning Post about a meeting that took place of provincial police chiefs talking about how they have um, been able to lower, lower the, what they call mass incidents, and that means protests or riots, um, by, by significant percentages, 20%, 30%, after they uh, install these cameras, which are part of what they call the Safe City Program. And there are 660 cities across China that have been designated safe cities which means that they get the extra technology and they're measuring the effect that this technology has on the number of protests and finding that they're reduced significantly. So what's so significant about this is that if we think back to uh, you know, uh, um, the, the, the 90s and the rhetoric of the 90s, even someone like Rupert Murdoch, who, who very famously said that when he brought satellite television to China, democracy would follow because no authoritarian regime could withstand this amount of, of, of information. There was an excellent article by his son who ran the satellite operation in China in Hong Kong right around that moment. And the son, I think, wrote the truth of it. He says, in fact, democracy is not our problem. Our problem is making money. If the Chinese people want democracy, let them worry about it. Well, they, you know, they, they've certainly learned to, to play by the rules in China, but there was that, that moment when, when it was like, you know, cell phones, fax machines, and satellite television were going to spread freedom through, uh, throughout China and every authoritarian uh, regime. Now what we're seeing is uh, high-tech companies, companies like General Electric, Honeywell, uh, the, the really big players, uh, um, Cisco has p played a, a really crucial role, also Google, um, th building the infrastructure of this surveillance state, the search engines that won't let you search on democracy in Tiananmen Square won't, or tell you that no objects have been found. Um, Cisco has, has really built, ha has built the, the great firewall uh, uh, that, 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 that is the censored internet and also allows the state to do remote p monitoring. Um, so this is very much a, a, a collaboration. This can't just be dismissed as red China's work. This is very much a collaboration of these um, Western global brands working with the Chinese Chinese government um, to, to do the opposite, not to spread freedom and democracy, but to actively suppress these emergent movements. And what's interesting about it is you, it, it's not that the protests aren't happening, and this because uh, uh, we can't be absolutist about this. There are many, many protests. But if we look at when the government gets involved, it's when there's the threat of a tipping point. It's such a large country, it's such a populous country, that the fear is not a protest or a strike here or there. That can be handled. It is the fear of that tipping point when it turns into a mass movement. Because in a country the size of China, um, when there is a mass movement, it will overwhelm the regime. So it's, it's monitoring and looking at a point where something just is starting to get too popular, when people in different areas are networking with each other, and there's the threat of a national movement. And frankly, that's why Falun Gong, you know, people I think are quite mystified by how this sort of weird sect could pr present such a threat to the state. And I think it, it probably is just because it is national and networked and surprised them. Uh, and, it, and this is a regime that doesn't want to be taken by surprise. So it's using the technology to get in there before the tipping point of these sort of nodes of protest turning into a network and potentially being a, a real movement and a real threat to the regime. So that's why I think it's very important. You know, I was talking to some students at Shenzhen University about this, and they were saying, 
Well, you know, people can post critical things on their blogs. Um, they'll only take your blog down if it's popular, <laughs> if a lot of people are reading it. Um, so that's why it's, I think, from a journalistic perspective, a little hard to cover. Sounds, because very, sounds very familiar, though, I have to say. <laughs> You, it's, a, it's kind of the difference here between you can say anything you want in North America on the internet, but it's quite different from what you can say on television. Yeah. If it's a mass medium, it's quite a different set of rules from when it's a niche medium. But also I think this is the fear of the Olympics and why this is a special moment, is I think the regime is keenly aware that anybody with a gripe gets a megaphone. And that's why we're seeing such an intense level of, of, uh, of repression right now. Please join us for the next segment of our interview with Naomi Klein.